everybody to the SSPA uh, task force for Lee District. I'm Ed Joseph, the chair. And um, uh, as usual, I have a script to go through. So just going to get started with that. Actually, one second. Yeah, all right. So, um, to conduct this meeting wholly electronically and to effectuate both the emergency procedures authorized by the Freedom of Information Act and the emergency ordinance, the Lee District SSPA task force needs to make certain findings and determinations for the record. Uh, first, because each member of the task force is participating in this me meeting from a separate location, we must verify that a quorum of members is participating and that each member's voice is clear, audible, and at an appropriate volume for all the other members. Accordingly, I'm going to conduct a roll call and ask each, ask each task force member participating in this meeting to state your name and the location from which you are participating. And it's okay to say you're at home. Uh, I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure that you can hear each of your colleagues. Following this roll call, we will vote to establish that every member can hear every other member. Okay, so starting with the roll call, uh, Robert Livingstone, I don't believe is with us tonight. Carol Allen. Carol Allen at home. Okay, thank you, Carol. Rand Pixa. Rand Pixa at home. Thank you, Rand. Uh, Andy Burnick, you're all, the alternate. Don't believe is with us. Pamela Pinieros. Pamela, you out there? Or Leslie Hatch, alternate. Moving on, uh, Leah Lamba Skidmore. Leah Lamba Skidmore from home. Thank you, Larry Dempsey. I don't think I saw Larry. Jane Kelly. Jane Kelly at home. Thank you, Jane. Jeff Safel. Jeff and Sona Safel from home. Yeah. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Sona. Thank you. Uh, Tom Rickard. Tom Rickard from home. Thank you, Tom. Cindy Potter. Cindy Potter from home. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, Jim Drinkard. He was here before. Yes, he was. Jim, we know you're out there. Jim? We'll come back to Jim. Rosemary Clay? Or alternate Liz Murphy? Moving on, Holly Doherty. Um, Holly, Holly? I don't think I saw Holly's name. Yeah, I, I just joined Ed. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, oh, there you go. Thank you. Holly. Could you state your name and where you're at? Uh, Holly Doherty, uh, Rose Hill, Fairfax County. <laughs> Thank you. That would have been fine. The universe. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. There, Jim. <laughs> All right, Don Tennant. I don't think Don is with us. Carl Sell. Wait a minute. He's trying to unmute himself. I think. Carl. Um, okay. All right. Carl, Carl again. You got me. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Could you say your name where you're at, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> you see your lips move, but I can't hear you. 
Rome. Thank you, Carl. <clears throat> Marta Morrissey. Marta Morrissey from home in Springfield. Thank you, Marta. Steve Levinson. I don't think Steve is with us. I'm here at home at Joseph. Tom Sachs. Tom Sachs at home. Tom? Tom Sachs at home. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Jim McCracken. McCracken at home. Thank you, Jim. And you have your alternate, Juliana Sharp. And Rachel Dexter. Moving on, John Tomko. John Tomko from home. Thank you, Richard Dresner. I think Richard's with us. And John Gagnon. John Gagnon, yeah. home, something, close by. Thank you, and back to Jim Drinker. Yeah, I'm here too, from home in Springfield. Just so we do it right, can you say your name, Jim? Jim, Jim Drinkard. I can spell it Thank for you. you. That's <laughs> quite right. The former, the what? district formerly known as Lee. <laughs> okay, we have 16, including me. And it's still Lee District, though not perhaps for long. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We have a quorum. At this point, I ask the uh, virtual gavel to Vice Chair Tom Sachs so I can maybe heard to make some necessary motions. Are there any motions from the floor? Yes, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I move that each member's voice may be adequately heard by each other member of the Lee District SSPA task force. Second. Do I hear a second? I heard that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is passed. Are there any other motions from the floor? Yes, thank you. I move that the state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe for the task force to physically assemble and unsafe for the public to physically uh, attend any such meetings. meeting and that as such, uh, the Act's usual the Freedom of Information Act's usual procedures, which require the physical assembly of the task force and the physical presence of the public, cannot be implemented safely or practically. I further move that the task force may conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated video and audio conferencing line, and that the public may access this meeting by registering through a meet the meeting link on the track of plan amendment page of the SSPA website or by calling 1-844-621-3956. Uh, and entering the access code 2348372-8617. It is so moved. Second. Is second? John a second. All in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed? Opposed. All opposed. Cheryl, did you? I oppose. Yeah. Okay. Can, well. I oppose because um, task force members are doing other things, going to the theater, flying on airplanes, going on cruises, going to the movies. If task force members can do that, task force members should be able to meet in person. Okay, any, any um, abstaining? The motion is carried. Thank you. Um, did we have two <clears throat> oppositions? Were there two people that opposed? Or I only heard one. Okay, sorry, this was John. I also only heard one, yeah. Uh, all right, thank you, Tom. I'll take back the, uh, the virtual gavel. Um, so uh, members were provided with the 
draft of minutes from our meeting of March, I'm sorry, of April 25th. Um, many thanks to Holly Doherty for drafting those minutes. Unless there are any suggested changes, I'll now entertain a motion to approve them. So moved. Do, do we have a second? Second. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes, please uh, aye. indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Say no. Any abstentions? John Tomkos, abstain. Cindy Potter abstains. I wasn't present. All right. Motion carries. The minutes are approved. All right, well, tonight we will again consider a draft plan text for the Van Dorn TSA. Staff has drafted three options for our consideration. And uh, we also uh, got a draft from uh, Tom Rickert and Carl Sell, which was distributed. Um, we can adopt one of these options as our recommendation is written. Uh, edit one of them to better express our thoughts, come up with something entirely new, or I suppose we could also recommend no change be made to the comprehensive plan for this area. So hopefully tonight we can figure out what we want to do. And uh, with that, I will turn things over to staff. And I believe it would be David Stinson, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, that's right. Thanks, Ed. Thank you, David. Take sure. it away. And Steve, are you there? Yes. Can you make me the presenter, please? There you go. Thank you. I think everyone can uh, see my screen. So again, um, I'm uh, David Stenson with the Fairfax County Department of Planning and Development. And also in attendance this evening are um, Clara Johnson and Mike Linsky and Steve Waller, also from the Department of Planning and Development. Additionally, Tom Burke and Arpita Chatterjee from the Fairfax County Department of Transportation are also in attendance this evening. Um, at this evening's task force meeting, we're going to continue the discussion regarding the draft plan text for the Van Dorn transit station area, which was distributed to the task force. We will also provide the opportunity for the public um, to ask questions and provide comment, followed by a task force discussion and a group from the task force on their recommendation. We will conclude this meeting with the next steps and the schedule moving forward. So the objective of this evening's meeting is to review the draft plan text and to get a recommendation and vote um, from the task force. Um, before we start, I believe um, Clara wanted to say a few words about the letters that we've received from the task force. Right, and I, and I think when we planned on this, we, we even re we received even more letters after um, our preparation of this presentation. I just wanted to say that um, we received a number of comments, some were shared at the last meeting and some since then, about change, cleaning up outdated language, um, making changes to language in other parts of the transit station area. Um, there, and, and we recognize they're outside of the area, the subject property for this plan amendment. But I, what I would recommend the task force do if, if, if they wish to, is to go ahead and, and make that a part of your recommendation and um, kind of let us figure out, let the planning commissioner and the board member figure out whether they need to alter the motion or have it be a follow on item, part of a future update to the plan. Um, periodically, we do update out, out of date language. Um, you know, there are a number of ways that that could be addressed. If that's the, if that's what you want to include in your recommendation. Um, so I wouldn't let the fact that it might not be a part of, of of this particular plan amendment stop you from recommending it since you've taken the time to look at it. I, that, that's what I'm going to recommend. Um, 
that we, we did receive that. And thank you for taking the time to, to provide that. Thanks, Clara. Okay, thank you. Um, and the draft plan text um, that was distributed earlier includes um, three options for task force consideration, which are titled task force option A, B, and C in the draft test. Um, the task force um, asked us to provide different options at the last meeting, and all of these options include a recommendation for approximately 375 multifamily residential units or stacked townhomes with a 65,000 square feet of neighborhood serving commercial and um, in includes conditions for um, compatible transitions to adjacent neighborhoods, to the south and east, pedestrian and bicycle connections to bus service along South Van Dorn Street and the metro station, um, stormwater management controls, and an engineering assessment for the planned bridge between Oakwood Road and Vine Street across the Beltway. Um, the primary difference between the three options under consideration this evening are the um, parcel consolidation requirements. Um, option A recommends full consolidation of land unit D, and it um, should be noted that this option was discussed at the last task force meeting and was voted down by the task force. However, we, um, we are reviewing this again for the purpose of providing a discussion of the full change of um, consolidation options. Um, Option B. Can I, can I just, I'm sorry, David. I just wanted to interject something about that vote um, at the last meeting. Um, the, the vote was uh, six in favor of the motion, eight against with one abstention. After the vote, I did receive a message from one of the uh, no votes saying that she, if given the opportunity, she would, um, change her, her vote to uh, to yes, which, you know, in, I had a brain freeze and I thought, well, that's not going to make any difference, but actually it would have resulted in a tie vote. The motion wouldn't have carried either way, um, but, you know, in essence, uh, the, 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 the committee members who attended the last meeting were were evenly split over that motion, even though that wasn't reflected at that time. I just wanted to let everybody know that. Thanks for the clarification. Thanks, David. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to get that in. Thank you. So um, option B includes a recommendation um, that allows parcel 12A located at 5605 Oakwood Road to redevelop independently of land unit D and recommends full consolidation of the um, remaining parcels of land unit D for redevelopment. And this option was also discussed at the last task force meeting. And, and option C also includes a recommendation that allows parcel 12A to redevelop independently of land unit D. However, instead of recommending full consolidation for the remainder of land unit D, it recommends logical consolidation. Um, because this option does not recommend full consolidation, um, this option also includes conditions for additional screening between new residential and existing commercial and industrial uses. Um, now, before we review the details of the options, does anyone have any questions about the differences of the three options at this point? And if no one does, I can I can just move on. So the Option B is, I see total consolidation of two entirely different components of Oakwood, correct? Yes, One is vacant what? land, the other side of the street has operating industrial businesses. But we would, option B is map 12A, unit 12A goes independently and the rest gets consolidated as a single entity. That's, that's correct. Thank you. Sure, no problem. And if there are no more questions, I, I can move on to um, provide more detail about the options. Just okay, one well, question. Not hearing any other discussion. Sure. Um, the screening should be provided between residential and existing commercial uses. Isn't that already mentioned somewhere else? 
Uh, yes, that's that is um, the option option C. I believe has yeah. has actually a condition for that, and the other option A and, and B don't have conditions. But it's but it's like for option B, it's like in the plan text. That may and I can review that when we when we dive into the options. I'll, I'll touch on that. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so um, next I'll review the details of the option. Um, but I guess before we start, can I can I ask a question? Sure. I'm sorry. Sure. Sure. Let me put my hand down here. Sorry. Um. So this bridge over the Beltway. It you know to me that just seems like really pie in the sky, that you know that that's something that's probably not ever going to happen. I mean, we can put it in a plan, but realistically to look at the cost of building anything like that that goes over the beltway, um, you know, just seems exorbitant. We know how much, how difficult it is to get funding for any traffic improvements that we're trying to do now and how expensive they are. And it seems like that many of these proposals kind of depend on that feature to provide adequate infrastructure, transportation, ways for everybody to get around. And so I, I, I kind of get stuck there. And I don't know if anyone else feels this way about that, that this is, you know, it's hard to talk about adding additional density when there really isn't a, a realistic way to move people around. Holly, this is John. I agree with your statement about pie in the sky. Um, and this <laughs> is Tom. If they do the easy pass lanes from Springfield to the Wilson Bridge, uh -huh. supposedly they're going to close off the exit to Vine Street, in which case that project will pay for the bridge, but it will route all the traffic on Vine Street through Oakwood. So the purpose of the bridge was not to help people from Oakwood get out on Vine Street. It's to do the opposite. So it's not really going to help with traffic if it's done as part of the road project. Tom, I'm wondering is does that mean that it's not really going to feed Metro station. I didn't understand. I didn't understand that. Uh, it doesn't feed the Metro station unless there is also a, at least a pedestrian connection from vine street uh, to the Metro station platform. Which has been contemplated uh, in some quarters, but. That's a whole second project that would be necessary. Yeah. And maybe yeah, Fairfax and, DOT can ask for that when yeah. they're negotiating on the Easy Pass project. Right, right. Um, I, I wanted, I wanted to to Holly's question. I, I think that's, I think that I we heard a lot of comments and received some um, written comments since the last meeting on on just that question, and I think that. There's a difference between, I think, how staff ar is arriving at their recommendation and how some members of the task force are viewing what what adequate transportation would be for this development. I think where, where staff has landed on this level of residential development is that the current transportation network is adequate. And, and I think it's simply the case that that's not that people don't agree with that. So that's that's one challenge. Um, you and, know and I, how, how we and how we arrive at that. The other, um, which uh, isn't any more helpful probably, is that this is about half the intensity than the current plan option. So we're actually reducing the development potential. It's an increase from the existing development, right? Um, which is often how people view this it would be an opportunity to do something that might be viable and so it would be it would open the door to something that might happen but from 
staff's analysis has to be from the comparing it to the current plan potential, which I know we've had discussions about how viable that current mixed use option is anyway. Um, so it's it's lesser in, it's less intensity. Um, so that I think that's some of the, the disconnect and some of the differences I think we just have. But one of the things that if you look at the comprehensive plan language for the TSA and even some of the comprehensive plan language for the Rose Hill uh, planning district, which the TSA is part of, it focuses in many areas and puts great emphasis on uh, if there's development, particularly development with residential that we need to focus on improved um, access to the beltway non automotive and in, in it, it refers to the transportation non automotive transportation as a, a, a critical uh, it's a key objective is transportation that is for pedestrians uh, either getting people pedestrians bicyclists pathways transportation to get you to uh, bus stops on Van Dorn so that's a focus all the way through the current comprehensive plan it's not specifically, it's not laid out in as much detail in the section that refers specifically to uh, land unit D, but it's, you know, throughout the comprehensive plan, that's a key focus. Uh, pedestrian access, uh, uh, paths, um, shuttle buses, things of that nature, something to reduce automobile traffic that would go out onto the, to the highways. Right. And so. And, and so then there's a, also, I know during the course of these task force meetings, a difference, um, some people expressing the, the very strong view that the only way to do that, I mean, it would, it would obviously be a very, uh, it would be a great way to get bicycles and pedestrians to the Metro station if we could make those connections by bridging. But an alternative way would be to, to use Van Dorn and to use a trail that, you know, that's about, it's about a third, it's less than half a mile to go that way. Still so technically bridge, considered walkable, but it's not, it's not an active walk, but, it's, but the, the bridge is in the comprehensive plan. And yes. it's also in the, I mean, the report that they have the, you know, the county funded $1.8 billion uh, to take us through 2030 to include a number of projects, one of which is to come up with a, a plan or some kind of a study of the bridge from Vine to um, Oakwood. So the county must have thought it important enough that they funded a study for it. I don't know the status of the funds, but you know, $1.8 billion is a lot of money, not just for this, but. I So Carol, I thought Tom Burke said at our last meeting that there were no plans to do a study and that funds had not been allocated for that. Tom, was that right? That's correct. The, um, the item in the capital improvement program that says X amount of dollars for all these different studies. A lot of those studies got funded, but this one did not. Um, and as of right now, there is no funding to do a, a study. So that that is correct. Is there like a to, add. to this document that uh, identifies uh, where that money went? It went to Lincolnia, Dulles Suburban Center. It went to Fairfax Center area. Um, went to a number of, of other area plans that were also vying for the same funds. Okay. But it was suggested and included in the, the list of things that it should go to. It just... Uh, it wasn't the first in line. I, I assisted in, I assisted in developing the budget request. We, we made requests for the money over the years and we just have not gotten the funding. Through the budgeting and funding process. Okay, thank you. And um, transportation dollars are very competitive. Yes. Um, all right. Is are we ready to move on with the rest of the presentation or are there more questions and comments? All right. Um, 
Okay, well, I can walk everyone through the um, option yeah, A, B, and C. So, so anyway, the plan text before you is option A, which again is similar to the draft plan text we reviewed at the last task force meeting. And the plan text in blue underline is, is the new draft plan text that has been added since, since the last task force meeting. So again, option A recommends up to 375 multifamily dwelling units or stacked townhomes and a maximum of 65,000 square feet of office or neighborhood serving commercial uses with um, with full consolidation for all for all of landing a D. And again, the area I outlined in blue on the map depicts the area required for consolidation in order to redevelop under this option, which is again the, the ent entirety of landing a D. And um, option A also includes conditions from compatible transition to, a, to adjacent residential neighborhoods to the south and east and improved pedestrian access to bus service on South Van Dorn Street and the Van Dorn Metro Rail Station, which um, have not been changed since the previous draft of plan text reviewed at the last task force meeting. It does, however, include changes to the stormwater management conditions. Um, these changes, as you can see in, in blue, um, simplify the plan text, but they do not change the meaning. And finally, the changes, um, the changes to this option regarding the bridge connection between Oakwood and Vine Street um, provide more detail as to how any new redevelopment must um, demonstrate that it does not preclude a, a bridge connection um, by recommending an, a, an engineering assessment. Um, so does anyone have any questions about option A before we move on to, to B? And if not, I can just, I can go through B. So, so Dave, I'm sorry. Um, can you just clarify for me the changes in option A from what it was previously? Um, so the, 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 the plan text highlighted in blue is, is the change from the last iteration of plan text we reviewed at the um, last task force meeting. So, I mean, like in this one, we just added clarifying language about all of parcels of landing at D would re require consolidation for redevelopment. And then um, in the conditions, we um, we simplified the stormwater management language. And then again, at the last meeting, we heard a lot about about the um, how do we prove that a that a that a that a new development does not preclude the bridge connection. So we added language that it would require an an engineering assessment, any new development again to preclude that the connection between Oakwood Road and Vine Street can still happen. David, can I ask a question? Sure. What what's the uh, the definition of an engineering assessment? Um, Tom Burke, do you have a good definition for that? Not to put you, sorry to put you on the spot. I think an engineering assessment, and at least in my mind, would be a not a full design and, and engineering of the bridge, but at least a ten percent or so design where where you figure out a, a footprint or an alignment for where the bridge can go and then how you would connect to Oakwood and how you would connect to Vine. Um, you know, with per you'd have to look at curves to make sure that they're realistic. Do we have curves or do we have stoplights? Like I think I, in the past I've talked about how we don't know whether you would drive straight down Oakwood stop at a stop sign, turn left, go over a bridge, stop at the bottom, turn left to go on vine, or whether they would be really curved so that it's like an, an uninterrupted flow. That's all stuff that I think would be looked at in a engineering assessment. My, my question was though, um, what would be the difference, difference between an engineering assessment and the bridge study, which was mentioned in the CIP? Is I think that more? More full um, yeah, maybe the one listed in the CIP would have been a little bit more full blown. I think we, 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 if the county had gotten the funding to do it, um, we might have gone a little bit further than we might have asked a consultant, but to, uh, I'm sorry, a developer or property owner, but I, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure how different they would be at this point. Thank you. Okay, so um, option B is similar to option A, and again, it recommends up to 375 multifamily dwelling units or stacked townhouses with 65,000 square feet of office and neighborhood serving commercial uses. 
Um, again, the conditions for option B are the same as for option A. However, the main difference between option A and B um, is it includes plan text recommending that if consolidation is unachievable, then parcel 12A, which is, is the, which is the parcel located at 5605 Oakwood Road, can develop with 100, 100 multifamily dwelling units or stacked townhomes and up to 10,000 square feet of neighborhoods serving commercial uses. The remainder of Lania D um, may redevelop independently of parcel 12A, and, and this, this portion can develop with 275 multifamily dwelling units and stacked townhomes and 55,000 square feet of office and neighborhoods serving commercial uses with um with full consolidation. Um, the draft plan text also includes recommendation for screening requirements between the new residential and existing commercial and industrial uses since um, since 12A and the remainder of, of Lanny and D may redevelop at different times. So we want to make sure that there's again screening between any new homes and existing commercial and industrial uses. And then finally um the map before you um demonstrates the consolidation requirements recommended by um scenario um option B. Um, parcel 12A is, is highlighted in blue and again can develop on its own and the remaining portion of Lania D is highlighted in green and must consolidate in order to redevelop it. So before I move on to option C, does anyone have any questions about option B? This is the area that Dan Logano is concerned about, correct? Where if there's residential there, there would be trucks coming through and and commercial traffic and industrial traffic. Am I correct? Yes, that was that was one of the concerns. Thanks. Let's move on to option C. I just have a, a comment. Uh, uh, interestingly, uh, the twelve A. If you go down Oakwood, uh, most of that uh, parcel has a sidewalk uh, in front of it, uh, open space uh, on the other side, and there's a, a striped crosswalk that goes from in front of that property to the other side of the street, which I found interesting. I had some people in my community offer to walk me down that path so that I can see where it goes, but I haven't had a chance to do that. Thanks. So, um, the last option we'll review this evening is um option C. Um, this scenario um does not recommend full consolidation and includes separate recommendations for land unit 12A. Um, like option B, it recommends 100 multifamily dwelling units or stacked townhomes, and up to 10,000 square feet of neighborhood serving commercial commercial uses um, for um, land unit 12A. However, the recommendation for the remainder of land unit D is different from option B as it does not require full consolidation. Additionally, because it doesn't require full consolidation, it uses a dwelling unit per acre approach for residential uses to ensure that um, all parcels have the opportunity to develop residential uses since full consolidation is, um, is not required. And this map demonstrates the consolidation requirements recommended by the de development scenario in option C. Um, as you can see, parcel 12A is highlighted in blue and can develop on its own. And the remaining portion of land unit D, which is highlighted in green cross hatch, must logically consolidate in order to redevelop. And the uh, conditions for option C include additional condi conditions not in option A or B, and, and they're highlighted here in blue. Mm -hmm. Um, because this use does not, again, require full consolidation, there are conditions for screening between new residential and existing commercial and industrial uses. And um, any new development must demonstrate that unconsolidated parcels can redevelop in conformance with the comprehensive plan. Um, this option also has a condition that um, self-storage use is not supported, which is stated in the plan recommendations for option A and B. But the reason this is stated as condition in option C is because it simplifies the structure of the plan text, but it doesn't it doesn't change the meaning. 
So the um, remaining conditions in option C are the same conditions for option A and B with conditions for pedestrian bicycle connections to transit, stormwater management controls, and demonstration with an engineering assessment that new development does not preclude the bridge connecting Oakwood Road to Vine Street. So, I mean, does, it, does anyone have any questions about option C? Yes, I have a, a question. You talk about um, 15, um, what was it? Uh, was it uh, something with the dwelling units, the, the density? 15. 15. Dwelling units per acre. Dwelling units per acre. I know that the seven parcels on the south side of Oakwood total somewhere between 12 and um, 13 acres, which would allow them 100 and allow for 180 dwelling units there. What's the um, acreage of the north side? Uh, well, it's it's, it's about 18.5 total. So what did you say the south side was, Carol? Um, there are seven parcels there. Most are two acres. Um, uh, but they came out to between 12 and 13 acres. So basically, it's about it's 18.5 acres total. So it's about 277 dwelling units for all of it. Okay. That's what it would be equivalent to. And I think th the initial proposal from um, Lynn Shribble is 275 dwelling units. Right, but that's only for the south side. Well, that. That would which be for would be, yeah, for, which under this would would be 180. Yes, yeah, yeah, that, that's that, that's correct. But uh, initially, um, the initial proposal I believe was looking at all of land unit D, like. We can go on. I just wanted to know right. the square the, right. the the square footage of those the acreage of those other parcels. Thank you. Sure. Is that it for your presentation, David? Yes, that concludes the um the the options. Does um Ed, would you like to open up the the forum to the public well, for questions, or yeah. would you like to start? Actually, what I what I'd like to do right now uh, is uh, ask Tom Rickert if he'd like to uh, make a say anything about uh, the proposal that he and, and Carl Sell put together. Yes, please, Ed. Uh, but I do have a question about the option B in the, uh, where it says the remainder of land unit D may redevelop independently of 12A with up to 275 multi-dwelling units or stacked and up to 55,000 square feet of office. Uh, when you say up to, does that allow them to do less than? Yes, it does allow them to do less than. So they could do residential and not do the mixed use. The way this is written, right? There, there are no phasing requirements. So they, okay. they could do less than the plan recommendations. All right. Um, I, have a, I do have, I would like a follow up question. Uh, yeah. Tom. So. With that, I may have missed that when I looked at it. Uh, the you split the usage here. Oh, never mind. This is consolidated. This is for the uh, fully consolidated. Okay, never. Okay, that's fine. Forget it. I'm okay. Okay. okay Tom, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. So, um, I think you all got a copy of the um, the plans. That, uh, the language that Carl and I were proposing. And since we didn't get the new proposal from staff till Monday night, we worked on fixing the one that we were left with in March. Um, if you have that in front of you, I'm gonna to refer to a few lines. In the current Van Dorn TSA development plan under design concept guidelines, page four, the second bullet point starts with a coordinated cir circulation system should provide internal connections and ends with, in order to increase pedestrian access to and from residential areas, a bridge over the Beltway should be provided in addition to the South Van Dorn Street pedestrian routes. We 
it goes on to state at the bottom of page four under land use recommendations first sentence environmental factors limited road capacity and limited access opportunities constrain the development of the van dorn tsa on page five design concepts for land unit a it states that much of the six acres is needed for the future interchange improvements and suggest an option to develop at 1.0 FAR with conditions, one of those being construction of or substantial contributions to the interchange improvements to be provided. Further down page five, under design concepts for land unit B, it suggests the 1.0 FAR mixed use option with conditions. First bullet point says, adequate access from arterial road systems and metro be provided, including contributions toward the design and construction of a new bridge connection to Oakwood Road. The second bullet point requires dedication of land for interchange improvements. The second option for land unit B suggests an intensity greater than 1.0 FAR, and its second bullet point requires a substantial contribution towards the bridge connection at Oakwood Road. The, um, my point is that many of the other land units in this TSA plan language are required to dedicate land or contribute to infrastructure improvements. Okay, now we, now we get to land unit D, which is our focus. Page six, design concepts for land units. The first paragraph starts with traffic capacity in D is limited. Excuse me, Tom. Somebody's on, and it's really hard to follow you because yeah. they're, um, they're on. Somebody unmuted. needs to mute. Uh, maybe. Uh, Ed, if somebody could mute. I don't have that power, but Steve should have that power. I think yeah. John, John Diggs. I, I believe it might be you if you could mute yourself. There's several people over under the participant list that aren't muted. Thank you. If, I, if we could ask um, Tom to go back a couple of sentences once everybody's muted, please. Yeah, Stephen can mute people. You got it? Is Steven there? I, I don't know if Steve's there. No, but John Diggs is not muted. John, John Diggs, if you would, thank you, John, for muting yourself. Okay. I'm, I'm like working on it. Everybody is muted except for me, Steve, and, well, Tom Rickard. Well, even Tom just muted himself. Tom? Uh, you can unmute yourself and go ahead. Now you can hear me. Okay. Yes. So my point is that many of the, the other land units in this TSA's plan language are required to dedicate land or contribute to infrastructure improvements. Okay. Which brings us to land unit D our focus tonight. On page six, design concepts for land unit. First paragraph states that traffic capacity in D is limited until substantial road improvements are made. And until this limitation is resolved, parcels in this unit should not, should continue in their current uses. Okay. My question is, do suitable road improvements imply a bridge? All right, middle of the second paragraph states, residential development may be considered as a component of mixed use development if certain conditions are met. The first bullet point says, it is important that mixed use projects that include residential be phased to ensure development of both the residential and non-residential components occur. It goes on to say that the phasing requires that the residential and non-residential develop at the same time or that the substantial amount of the non-residential be in place before the residential starts. 
So I assume that if the mixed use option staff has proposed is adopted, the above design concepts will remain in place. Okay. Staff, this multifamily office commercial option. Well, there's three flavors now. Two, you know, two con include consolidation, one does not. Uh, the bullet point four we want to add says that adequate access from arterial road systems and metro rail to be provided, including contributions towards the design and construction of a new bridge connection from Vine Street to Vine Street, providing multimodal and pedestrian access to the metro. This is the same wording used in the Vine Street land unit B condition, which is the other side of the bridge. So I believe that adding this bullet point will ensure that if the residential development occurs, it won't leave infrastructure's need, needs left unaddressed, okay? So, and this is a TSA. Everybody needs to, should, each land unit should contribute in some way, shape or form towards the overall infrastructure, whether it's on their land or not. Um, some of them are, are dedicating land to the interchange. Some of them will have to give land to the easy pass lanes. And some are, you know, giving, you know, putting up money towards the future, you know, what's needed. The, um, so we, we, we really think that this needs to not, it can, it's just getting kicked down the road. And then the last guys to, to and to, to do this will will bear the brunt of the cost. Now, one last thing, I thought it was interesting that in the Kettler letter, they mentioned that the bridge is actually gonna land in land unit E, not D, that they own that. So I think that we should be aware of that. And I think that all the other land units that, um, should contribute in one, some way, shape, or form to the transportation, whether it's the interchange, the bridge, study, you know, proposal that we should try and get money from the uh, Easy Pass people. And um, I think it's an important part of the discussion that's uh, just being uh, put off. And it's going to, you know, the interconnect, the interparcel connectivity of this project. And it's a transit station area is, 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 is horrible. You know, if you want to have residential, people need to be able to get to the metro station without driving a car. So that's my point and thank you for listening. Thank you, Tom. I, I have a question before we go any further, a question for you, Tom. Mm -hmm. the, you, the way you presented this in, in written form, the, this, was attached to the the proposal from the last meeting, uh, the language from the last meeting, and it, it was written in such a way that would require full consolidation. Uh, I don't know if that is important to you, is, is that a central point to you, or would you be happy with taking this uh, highlighted paragraph that would require the, um, you know, the what we see on the screen here, adequate access from the arterial road system, et cetera. If that, if you would be satisfied if that was added to say either option A, B, or C that staff presented us with tonight. Uh, if the group chooses one of those, I would ask that this be added to it. So, would it be fair to say that your central point had nothing to do with the full consolidation, but that this here uh, regarding the, the bridge is your central point? It is. I, we had some other pages, but I'm told they're out of the scope and we could add them to our review. The, um, I think the bridge is my central point and I was working with what staff had left with us and it, it did not, it, it included full consolidation. So I, I, I wasn't gonna pull it out, 
You know, we had a tie vote about that last meeting. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, but to answer your question, other... I, I would be satisfied if this was added to one of the three flavors we've been presented with tonight. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Does anybody else have any questions or or comments? Well, actually, I think we ought to, uh, at this point, open it up to members of the public, and then uh, we will, after that, get to members of the task force. Uh, does anybody from the public have any questions or comments regarding any of the proposals that we've that have been presented here tonight? This if you Charlie do Keeler, wish to this speak, is Charlie Keeler with Kettler, I'd like to make some comments. Uh, very well. Can we one second, Mr. Keeler? Uh, if anybody else wants to comment, please uh, raise your electronic hand if you. Uh, click where it says participants uh, at the bottom there you will see a, uh, a little icon with a hand if you just click on that hand that will raise your electronic hand we should be able to see that and then um, uh, when you're done speaking click that again to lower your hand uh, Mr. Uh, Keeler go ahead Uh, we've been developing property in the, the Lee district uh, since Joe Alexander was uh, the supervisor and uh, Bob McLaren was the environmental guy on the Lee district and Bob Heitman was the transportation guy. And uh, we have a long history of developing property in the Lee district and have a wonderful relationship with uh, the Lee district land use committee and appreciate uh, you allowing me to make the comments. Uh, we've always felt that the Lee district land use committee was a complementary uh, organization that they were not opposed to everything that they tried to make things happen and we feel that full consolidation in this instance is is not a recommendation and I'd like to take you back in history a little bit uh, this piece of property that we own now was originally 18 acres and we dedicated six and a half acres off of this piece of property in order to allow for the realignment of Oakwood Road so that uh, um, Franconia could be widened to six lanes from Bent Willow Drive to the to the to the uh, uh, beltway. Uh, that is one third of the property. We've been working with this piece of property for many many years and haven't been able to do anything with it in in its current uh, zoning. And we feel that uh, a full consolidation is not fair. That uh, this pop property was consolidated many years ago, approximately ten. Uh, properties, the, uh, the the 20 properties along Oakwood Drive, uh, the, the folks on the north side of Oakwood Drive, the depth of those properties, the maximum depth of those properties is only 180 feet, so they don't even meet any kind of setback requirements or yard requirements uh, for, for residential, let alone even discussing the sound pressure uh, uh, zones that they might have to uh, agree to, to, to or uh, be subject to for any kind of residential development. So my my suggestion is that any kind of residential development north of Oakwood Road is not going to be uh, viable. So that leaves us with residential development possibly on the south side of Oakwood Road. And from my observation of the traffic on Oakwood Road, it's mostly small trucks, U-Haul trucks, some gravel, not really uh, large trucks. It's not semi-tractor trailers, uh, you know, uh, it's it, the compatibility of our site with the remainder of uh, Oakwood Road uh, is it, it doesn't really compare across the street from us as a suburban propane uh, place where you can go and get your propane tank refilled. Simple, simple, pretty simple matter. Uh, not a, uh, a huge conflict in terms of incompatible uses. Uh, we've struggled with this property for many, many years and uh, the substantial, substantial reduction in the density that we're prefer that we're offering here it, it would it seems to me, and and including the traffic study that we paid for at the county's direction, uh, shows that this is a much better scenario than a million square feet of office, which is what the site is currently planned for. If we don't want to develop the site ever, uh, we 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 go for total consolidation. If we want to develop the site on a reasonable basis, then I think uh, 
reasonable consolidation is the, is the way to go. And with that, I'll get off my soapbox and uh, uh, turn the floor back to you. Thank you so much, Mr. Keeler. All right, I see we have uh, hands up from Lynn Strobel, Ann Bloss, and Randy Davis. I will turn to Lynn and then to the others. Go ahead, Lynn. Thank you, good evening, and I, I appreciate the opportunity just to say a few words. And I know it was only today, but I hope that um, you all were able to take a quick read of the letter that I submitted. And I just wanna echo what Mr. Keeler says. If you don't wanna see any of this property developed, then it should be full consolidation because with full consolidation, I don't see residential development happening. And if that is the case, what you're really doing is precluding use of the parcels on the south side of Oakwood Road. Um, right now, the south side of Oakwood is planned for office. And I think that some of these parcels have been zoned for office for decades. They have not been developed because this doesn't make sense for office. The properties don't have visibility. And when you take that and couple that with today's office market, office is just not economically feasible. It's just not going to happen. So if we can't have residential as in the plan, if we don't have office as a reasonable use, then what's left but industrial. So I would ask that if there is going to be some type of full consolidation requirement, which makes residential not, not possible, then I would ask that the plan language, the prefacing language for the base level, where currently it says office only on the south side of Oakwood, should be changed to office or industrial. If that's what folks want, then we should change the plan to incorporate that. So anyway, I appreciate your time. Be happy to answer any questions. I know that Mr. Driggs has been listening and he can certainly add if he would like to, but thank you very much. Thanks, Lynn. Uh, I missed the fact earlier that Laurie Greenleaf also had her hand up. Uh, Laurie, did you wanna add something here? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ed. Um, yeah, and, and Charlie said a lot of what I what I was thinking um, during staff's presentation. There's just a couple other things I wanted to point out. The the existing language um, that allows you know the the 850,000 square feet uh, 1.0 FAR that only requires substantial consolidation, not full consolidation. Just wanted to bring that point up. Again, reiterate that this nomination drastically reduces the density and the traffic study showed that um, trip generation would be less than even the base option that's in the plan at a 0.5 FAR office. Um, so the idea that we're talking about more density here just, just isn't true. Um, I, I would point out I, in Lynn's letter, um, I hope you all did read it, that that you know, we were talking the last time about logical consolidation. What she's done in there is suggested something with a little more meat in it, um, logical consolidation, but an, enough land area that um, buffering and screening could be provided, and that enough land area is left after the logical consolidation that that parcel can develop in accordance with the plan. So you're not leaving a half an acre or something that is that couldn't couldn't redevelop. So it, there's a little more meat in it now in the suggestion than just just logical consolidation. Um, and I think the last thing I wanted to say was, um, you know, pick, kind of piggybacking on Tom and Carl's language. Um, it, it's interesting that the contribution language is in the parcels that are on the north side of the beltway because they're going to benefit from the bridge, as was stated earlier. If, if Vine is cut off, those are the parcels that are going to going to benefit. I understand that you know this is all a TSA. Everybody should contribute in some way. I, I would ask if you're going that direction and if you're going to add um, that um, the, the language about uh, the contribution towards design or construction that you also consider land dedication, um, as Tom mentioned, as as an option for land bay D, um, because as you mentioned, Hitler does own. What a meeting. That that land bay E, the, what's left of land bay E all the way across there, that is where, at least in the comprehensive plan now, where the the 
you gotta uh, give a shot to the connection is to the bridge somewhere along there. Take Dudley, which take Dudley. Uh, St Steve Waller, we can hear you speaking to somebody outside of the meeting. I'm I'm sorry, my two year old busted in on me. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, Laura. I'll listen just, to me, and he'll yeah. go back to sleep. Um, um, so so if you could consider adding language, um, contribution towards design or construction of new bridge or dedication of land area, um, that would facilitate the bridge. That would right. be a suggestion. Um, last thing I'll say is thank you. Oh. In that traffic study that that that. Kettler did pay for and we did. Um, they did do a trick count. Um, and turns out that during the AM hour, AM peak and the PM peak, I think the AM peak was a truck every five minutes and the PM was a truck every 10 minutes. So it's it's not a continual flow of truck traffic. That's the last thing I wanted to add. Thank you. Thank you, Laurie. Uh, Ann Bloss. And I, I think I'm, I'm beginning to feel some time pressure. I want to make sure everybody gets a chance to speak, but uh, if we could keep our comments uh, short, that would be great. Anne Bloss. Hi, thanks. Um, so I can't help but thinking that it might be time to ask whether this is actually just the wrong task. Um, the, the tasking to look at these two nominations and update the comprehensive plan. Um, is it time to ask whether that's actually an impossible task? Because we're only allowed to comment on this tiny segment of the whole area when really the whole area is the Rubik's Cube, you know, changing one part of it impacts all the other parts. Um, and I, I can't, I drove around Vine Street and I drove around Oakwood and I just couldn't help observing this mismatch between the comprehensive plan and what's actually on the ground. So the comprehensive plan describes something like a crystal city, but when you drive down Oakwood and Vine, you'll see active businesses with um, people there clearly doing business, um, doing things like sheet metal or painting or fencing or auto repair. And um, I, I sort of think if we were to try and push towards the Crystal City design, you know, if we were to muscle those um, businesses out, then where would they go? Because societies need those businesses too. Also, parts of this TSA, and at, at this point, I, I almost want to start wanting to talk with my fingers and make little quotey signs, like part of this TSA can't even access the Metro without either leaving the TSA and coming back into the TSA or by trespassing. So for instance, I can walk to the Metro um, in about a mile from my house, but only if I trespass on you know, some, some land that I don't know anything about. Um, otherwise, it's three miles. So, you see where I'm going with this is that the comp plan is talking about a TSA, but that's so far removed from the reality that I want to ask, does the TS, does, does the task force maybe want to say that the Van Dorn TSA needs a comprehensive review separately? I mean, this is no fault of the nominators. All the complications that everybody's been pointing out are kind of unsolvable in a meeting format with some draft language. Anything that we come up or anything that you come up with is going to be imperfect. Um, and, you know, I know this type of planning is always imperfect, but I, I think this is a little bit farther from perfect than, you know, maybe we actually want to think about saying that this is the wrong task. So that's just a comment for you. Um, I have a separate comment also. Um, I, when we talk about Vine Street, I wonder, um, where, where does it say that Vine Street is supposed to get closed off to Van Dorn? Is there some plan or, or concept out there that I, I don't know where to look at to see where, uh, I mean, I've heard people talk about it, but I don't know where it says that Vine Street might get potentially closed off. 
There, there is no plan. This is Tom Burke with DOT. Uh, the the VDOT study is just now kicking off. I think they'll probably take a fresh look at the interchange area and how everything works together. So I, I, I have heard the same rumors that the Vine Street access might get affected, but I don't think there's anything set in stone or anything set in that plan right now. Okay, so then I have a question for um, the task force or maybe the lead district land use committee. Um, how, this is probably a lead district land use committee, so I'll, I'll just point this out for now. Um, how would the lead district land use committee want to fit into the 495 South Side study? I know that's not part of this forum, so next time, I guess. Um, but considering Vine Street, if Vine Street were to, were to get closed off from Van Dorn, then they would have to drive through Oakwood. And that kind of defeats any of the justification about consolidation, because now the industrial uses from Vine Street would have to drive through Oakwood. So even if all of Oakwood were to be completely consolidated, that still doesn't resolve the problem about um, industrial drivers on Oakwood. Um, so uh, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Um, Randy Davis. And uh, but actually, before Randy speaks, uh, anyone who's already spoken, please uh, click to take your hand down. So I'm not confused with, with uh, old hands being up. Um, thank you. Uh, Randy Davis, go ahead. Thanks, Ed. This is actually, this is Randy. Karen and I are both here and Karen has a comment. Oh, thank you. First of all, I, I want to thank the task force for all of their work. I know you're volunteers and you do it under tremendous pressure and you're on more than one committee. And I want to thank the staff, but as people directly affected by this, members of the public, our house abuts one of the land units on South Oakwood, not, um, the Kettler land unit, the unconsolidated land unit. And it's very frustrating for us to sit here and hear Mr. Rickert, with whom I agree, and Ms. Strobel, with whom I do not agree, talk about letters that you're all bandying back and forth that we can't comment on because we've never seen. So the the um maybe the setup of the agenda where the public speaks before everything's put forward before them is maybe a little bit backwards, at least as far as we're concerned, because we're commenting on things we haven't seen, we haven't heard, and none of that takes away from our gratitude for everyone, especially Carol, and all of you who have worked on our behalf to try to come to a conclusion on this. Thank you, Karen. Um, just, you know, these things, these uh, documents that you refer to, uh, it was just a, they, they all came about in the last uh, 24, 48 hours. And uh, it's, I, I appreciate your concern. I don't know how we could have gotten them out there to you, but um, I, I do appreciate your point. It makes sense. Um, but, you know, they are being uh, talked about here. So the, the content is part of this meeting. Um, all right, uh, I don't, not aware of anybody else from the public with a hand up, just double checking that. And uh, so now we'll move to the task force. Um, uh, Holly, uh, Doherty. Oh, I'm sorry, Ed, I need to take my hand down. Oh, okay, uh, Tom Sachs. I'm concerned that we're putting the cart before the horse. Um, Tom Burke, do we have any concept of what land VDOT will new, need if they go ahead with the easy pass lanes? Uh, what was the, anyone else? Do we have any concept of what land they will need if VDOT goes forward with the easy pass lanes? I, I think I've heard estimates. Is it 200 feet? Um, I don't know if that, I probably shouldn't answer this because I don't know the answer, but um, well, will yeah, it affect this, potentially affect this parcel? Well, yeah, if you, if you picture the beltway 
going up Springfield up to Tyson's, if you have something similar in the middle of the beltway here, uh, it's certainly going to push everything out. So uh, some of the portions of the properties on the north side of Oakwood might be affected, certainly on the south side of, of, of Vine Street might be affected. But um, to be honest, I don't know to what extent at this point yet. The, the process has just started. Yeah, and you, can, you can imagine, though, that you have these very wide medians for the express lanes that would have to be squeezed in. Right. And if they redesign the interchange, who knows how much more they'll need. So I'm very concerned about changing the comprehensive plan when we don't know what the decision on is on the easy pass lanes and we don't know how much land they're going to need. The other thing I'm concerned about is traffic. It talks about how there have to be major land traffic improvements before this area is developed. It can take 30 to 45 minutes to get to the beltway from Kingstown. You add another 375 dwelling units, which, you know, could be 500 cars, could be 700 cars during peak rush hour. The roads just can't handle that kind of traffic. And, you know, you talk about doing TDMs, but if you do shuttles or something, they can't get to the metro so people won't use them. So I really think this is too dense for the area. I think it's too soon. And I think we ought to just leave the plan alone. And the last point is, if in fact we require it passes and we require money to go toward a bridge study, there needs to be a fallback if the bridge and the study are part of the easy pass lanes. Something like if, if a bridge study is not needed, the Lee District Supervisor has the authority to use whatever funds are collected for projects in the Lee District. And, and I'll leave it with that. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Carl Sell. I think what Tom and I are trying to do is make sure that there isn't piecemeal residential development in this area without some recognition and participation in solving some of the traffic problems. Regardless of what they say, if, if we don't have it in the plan, you can bet me they're not going to come to the table with any interest in trying to be a part of the solution to what happens to Vine Street and the access to Metro and that sort of stuff. We can't allow any residential to go there that doesn't participate in the final solution of whatever happened to get people to the metro station. And uh, it's parcel D, the 12A, is, is a critical part of that, and that needs to be recognized and further studied and further looked at by a combination of public and private organizations, those who want to develop and those who want to just plan and, and zone and move ahead. So they're, they're point of view and it's just self-serving, I'm afraid. Thank you, Carl. All right. Um, Carol Allen. Yes, thank you. Um, I have, first I have an answer for Anne's question. Uh, there's a couple of things on, in the uh, cast in the document that um, uh, Tom Rickert presented and went through. There's uh, under land unit B. It does state that the parcels along Vine Street are either vacant or utilized for a variety of industrial uses. Some of the land at the western end of Vine will will be needed for interchange improvements that may sever the connection of Vine and South Van Dorn. And then that's when it starts, it talks about the bridge and requires development in that sector for um, the bridge. Um, I, I have concerns about the, um, the, the improvements on the beltway as well uh, and what that will do to the streets. Um, uh, the, they have their first meeting tonight. Um, I, I wasn't at the last meeting, I wasn't overly concerned with uh, funding for a bridge, but after going through the, 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 the current comprehensive plan language, as Tom pointed out, speaks over and over and over again about traffic and improvements. And that if there aren't improvements uh, that uh, 
development should be limited. And two pages beyond uh, where uh, Tom finished with um, his uh, presentation, there's a paragraph that says, until additional capacity is determined and approved, only one half the total development potential allowed in land units B, D, and E may be constructed and that it, monitoring by the DOT might be necessary. Now, if we make, if we accept any of the changes that staff proposed, does this still stay in effect? We aren't changing this language, correct? They would still be subject to these conditions? That's, that's correct. We're not proposing to move any conditions from the plan. So, Just... it's, uh, and I, I have, um, I have, you know, we fought long and hard uh, for commercial on Oakwood, uh, but that was uh, before land unit E was developed with primarily residential. Um, it seems to me that it was developed in inconsistent with what the current plan language says, but they do not have any ingress or egress from Oakwood. They went through uh, existing communities, Brooklyn Bush Hill and uh, Claremont. So that's how they get in and out of those developments. Um, I see advantages to having residential, but my concern is transportation. And I know what the transportation studies show, but I live here. It's not uncommon. And yes, with residential, we'll have fewer trips, but it's seven days a week. It's not uncommon today for it to take 20 to 30 minutes to go from Franconia and Van Dorn to Etzel Road in Van Dorn. And that's on a Saturday. And this will be, so we've got additional 300, 200, 300 homes, um, residential uh, units uh, added to the traffic on the weekend because most of the people aren't gonna walk to the Metro from this development. Um, one of the things that I, I look at is that, and, and, and Anne's correct, I've been down both Vine and um, Oakwood recently during the day, and there are people coming and going, coming and going. And uh, the Vine Street has more office type buildings for the, the industries that are there, but there were people coming to visit those sites, were people coming and going. Um, uh, so, I mean, there's a, the vi there's viable business. And um, so my, cons my concern with, um, you know, I'm not sure full consolidation makes sense, uh, given that you've got some uh, businesses that are operational there and they really aren't that, those properties really aren't taken into consideration in the plan that Lynn put together. But with the proposal that staff has for logical contribution, uh, 15 dwelling acres, 15 dwelling units per acre for the acreage that Lynn represents, that means 180 dwelling units. Uh, given that those properties uh, abut residential, I don't think an industrial use should be included in them because the comprehensive plan clearly states that it's not it, that, that's not acceptable. So uh, to have an industrial use that backs up to a residential property, I don't think is acceptable. So, and you've heard from me in the previous month, so I'll finish there. Thank Although you, I do Carol. think that uh, knowing, uh, knowing what uh, the, the, they're gonna do with the Beltway would be helpful. Um, Jane Kelly. Thank you. I think this question is for Thomas Burke. Um, clarification on the VDOT Easy Pass study that has started. Is that true? And when will that be done? Because it seems like that has a direct impact on everything in this area. So I just that's my question. Yeah, um, the planning study has kicked off. I think we're having public meetings right about now. Um, I think it was kicked off around December or it was announced December or January. So it's very early. And I want to say that it's um they're they're banking on being banking on it being like an 18 to 24 month study. So it's gonna be going on for a little while. Thanks, Tom. 
Um, well, we are, oh, is Tom Rickard, is that a new hand up from you? Yes, please. I just wanted ahead, to uh, quote in the guidelines for transit oriented development, appendix two. This is for all TODs. On page 37, it says a non degradate under under traffic. It says a non degradation policy should be applied to areas immediately adjacent to the TOD and to arterials serving the TOD. This policy requires the traffic flow in the adjacent areas and on the arterials served by the TOD perform no worse after development of a TOD takes place. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Okay, well, it is now 8.30, just about, and um, we haven't really gotten into any, well, we, we, I don't, we, we need to figure out what our recommendation is going to be. Um, and I have a motion. Does anyone have it? This is Tom, I have okay. a motion. The, my motion is Tom, that go we, ahead. my motion is that we leave the comprehensive plan as it stands right now and not do anything until we have more information on what they're doing on the beltway. Second. Second. I'm sorry. H hold on a second. So who who was it that second that? Jim McCracken did seconded it. the motion. I'm sorry. Brian Pixa seconded it, and then someone else did also. Jim McCracken did. I couldn't hear it. Jim McCracken. Yes. Thank you, Jim. Okay, we have a motion and a second. The motion is to leave the to make no changes, to leave the comprehensive plan as it is until there is more uh, clarity about plans for expansion of the beltway. Um, does anyone want to comment on this before we move to a vote? I think it's the prudent thing to do. I think it's, uh, I, I'm here, I see no hands up. I heard a voice, who, who just spoke? John Tomko. I think uh, Tom's motion yeah. is the prudent thing to do. Um, I know it's not gonna satisfy everybody, but there are too many variables and too many unknowns regarding the, um, uh, the lanes, the hot lanes, and the redevelopment of 495. And uh, so I just think we ought to uh, approve this motion. Does anyone else have any uh, comments? Um, this yes. is Clara I from staff. Was... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I think once the, once the task force has acted or voted on this motion, I, I think I, I and, and I don't know if this will affect anybody's vote, but I would just encourage the task force to think about what other messages or concerns or write up they would like to include. I don't know what will happen as next steps. Um, and so I, 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 if that helps, knowing that that, that, may, that that doesn't have to be the whole message you send forward to the planning commission. I just wanted to add that. Thank you, Clara. Uh, anyone else with anything they wish to say? Yes, please. Uh, yeah. Who's that? It's Tom Rickard, Jefferson Manor. Uh, Tom, go ahead, Tom. As, as um, Ms. Doherty had mentioned a couple of meetings ago, this is going to displace a lot of established businesses that have nowhere to go. And uh, until the Beltway Express Lanes and the configuration of the overpass is determined, 
and and they may even have to include if they cut off Vine Street, they may need to be responsible for the bridge. It's too early to make all these decisions, in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, I, I do want to clarify. So, the the mo Tom the the Tom Sachs I'm addressing the the motion is to. I, I just want to get some some language here that's exactly what you, you want to say. So it leaves the comprehensive plan as it is. And that's it. Well, didn't, didn't you want to say until uh, there's, and, and this is where I, I, that doesn't need to be part of the motion. So, and well, we, wouldn't, wouldn't it be better to include more information about what the motivation, uh, you know, if, if indeed the reason for the leaving it as it is, is because we want to see what's going to happen with the beltway. Wouldn't it be better to say that? So yeah, that I guess it's it would more be. understandable. So, yeah, I guess it would be. Tom, or Ed, the way I wrote down what he said was, uh, the motion is to leave the comprehensive plan as it currently exists until the Beltway Express Lane study is completed and more information is available. So the Beltway Express Lane study is completed. And more information is available. So leave the comprehensive plan as it currently exists until the Beltway Express Lane study is completed and more information is available. Is that is that accurate, Tom? Yes, it is. That's accurate. Okay. And then uh, so if Jim, do you agree since you have seconded the motion? Yes. Yeah, I Okay. I do. So the motion on the table is leave the comprehensive plan as it exists until the Beltway Express Lane study is completed and more information is available. Uh <clears throat> before we vote, is there any are there any last comments? My understanding of the comprehensive plan the way it sits today, uh, having read it three or four times uh, in the last month, uh, it does permit uh, yeah. residential development in this uh, land unit under certain conditions. So by keeping the land, keeping the current language until we know what the beltway is going to do doesn't eliminate the ability for residential to take place on this on these parcels. Okay. All right. Ed. There are no further comments. Carl, yes, go ahead. Carl, I, I think you muted yourself after you said my name. So we see your lips moving, but we can't hear you. Unmute, Carl. Still got to unmute. Steve Waller, could you unmute Carl Sell? Okay, Carl, be... go ahead. You're unmuted. Thank you, Steve. Go ahead, Carl. The things that you got to add to the condition is the full man interchange at Van Dorn Street and access to Metro in addition to just the express lane. I'm sorry, Carl, I, you broke up a little bit. Could you repeat that, please? The, one of the conditions should be the full Van Dorn Metro 
full Mets Van Dorn interchange, access to Metro, and the express lanes. They all play together. Right, but the, mo the motion is to leave the comprehensive plan as it is. So there, the motion is not proposing any changes whatsoever. Uh, is that okay? So I'm not okay. sure how what you're saying okay. fits with that. I mean, perhaps you're against it, perhaps you're, but I'm not sure how your comments fit. All right. I was I think he was just trying to add. Neither the any of the others. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. Call the vote. What did you say, James? Oh, I said call the vote. Uh, we'll, we'll be voting momentarily, but I, you know, I, I did call on Carl, and I'm not. I'm just not sure we got we fully got what he was trying to say. Uh, Jim Drinker, Tom, I think he was trying to add something to the motion where I mentioned until more is known about the easy pass lanes. He'd like to add more onto it. The right. interchange, but but I don't yeah. think it's I don't think it's necessary as the EDC pass lanes are going to drive everything else. It couldn't hurt to add and so the interchange. I get them, uh, well, but un un just... unless uh, Tom, Tom and and Jim McCracken are willing to change the wording of the motion, we'll we'll proceed. I don't believe it was a need. As... And if I could just make okay. a comment. All right. Go ahead. So I, I am sympathetic to the comments from the landowners that they're currently, you know, with the current zoning that they're unable to develop, that they've, you know, been trying for years to do different things and that the zoning really needs to be looked at. So I I am just assuming then that if this resolution were to pass that that this committee or the land use committee would come back at some point and look at this piece of land again is that correct well it depends what the board of supervisors ultimately decides i mean they may or may not accept our recommendation they may do something completely different um but if if they accept our recommendation and leave the current the comprehensive plan as it is then you know presumably at some point in the future um this will come back around with a new proposal and we'll start all over again um, in whatever the sspa process turns into i have a question for staff is there a time limit if we were to make this rec pass this recommendation and the planning and the board of supervisors uh, agreed with it. Uh, is there a time limit um, that would prevent the applicants from coming back in three and for three years, four years? Um, I, the rules for the next SSPA process haven't been written. Typically, typically something that was recently. It depends on how those rules are written. It's possible they might be excluded. However, um, the board member could authorize a plan amendment at any time. It, it would. Um, it, it could be. It could. It could also. This recommendation, as Ed suggested, it could be that the board takes an action anyway. But however, if they accept your recommendation, it could be that they simply defer this plan amendment. That's one of their options. They okay. could. Okay. They could just vote to not support it, and that's the end of the plan amendment in this Correct. form. Okay, thank you. And a deferral by the board would actually fit in with this recommendation, I think, because it would leave the plan as it is. Interesting thought. Okay, I think we're ready uh, for a vote. What did you just say there? Did you say a deferral by the board? 
Yeah. If the board like just defers action rather than you know adopts yes. new plan language or or if they were to uh, or or did not or or making a decision to wouldn't they have to vote to, to not to adopt to, the language? Wouldn't they? I'm have sorry. To vote? This is John. Wouldn't they have to vote to approve? If we, if this committee or council or task force, wherever we are, votes on this motion in the affirmative to do, to to defer to not move forward, wouldn't the board have to act on that too? I, or could they? Do they have the? No, they don't have to do anything. No, no. Our, our, we our recommendation goes to the planning commission along with you know the the staff will make a separate recommendation. Who knows what other recommendations come in? The planning commission will decide what they want to recommend to the board of supervisors. Then the board of supervisors takes all of that, looks at it, and figures out what they want to decide. Um, so they don't have to do anything with our recommendation. It's just one of the number of recommendations that they will receive. So can we add to our recommendation that this be brought up as soon as the V dot be that study of the um, easy pass lanes are done that we will look at this again. Could that be a part of our nomination? This is Tom and it's up to the board to decide when it's looked at again. That's not our place to put in an emotion. And depending if, if, if you know, there are a lot of ifs in that scenario, but um, if that were the case and this came back at a future time, um, probably this task force wouldn't I'm going to guess this task force wouldn't be wouldn't come together given that there's a land use committee, a standing land use committee. I think that seems more likely. Right. I don't know, but it would, the, the right answer yeah, is it's up to the, the board member. Right. And there may be, you know, whatever, you know, changes are going to be made to the SSPA process and whatever the SSPA process becomes, you know, perhaps there'll be another task force. It might be many of us. The same people, it might be different. Who knows? Um, anyway, so the motion on the floor is to uh, leave the comprehensive plan as it currently exists until the Beltway Express Lane study is completed and more information is available. So I'm going to go through a, a roll call vote. As I call your name, please vote yes if you're in favor of the motion to leave the comprehensive plan as it is. I'll vote no if you're against it, and you can always abstain. I will. All right. Starting with the roll call Carol Allen. Carol Allen votes yes. Carol votes yes. Rand Pixa. Rand Pixa, yes. Rand votes yes. Leah Landa Skidmore. Leah Landa Skidmore votes yes. Leah votes yes. Jane Kelly. Yes. Jane votes yes. Jeff Safel. Jeff Safel votes yes. Jeff votes yes. Tom Rickard. Tom Rickard votes yes. Tom votes yes. Cindy Potter. Cindy Potter votes yes. Cindy votes yes. Jim Drinkard. Jim Drinkard, yes. Jim votes yes. Holly Doherty. Yes. Holly votes yes. Carl Sell. Yes. Yes. Carl votes yes. Marta Mar. Thank you, Carl. Marta Morrissey. Marta Morrissey votes yes. Marta votes yes. Tom Sachs. I vote yes. Tom votes yes. Jim McCracken. Yes. Jim votes yes. John Tomko. Yes. John votes yes. John Gagnon. Gannon. John votes yes. 
John, I'm, I'm never going to it. get I, your I, name I, right consistently. I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay, John Avarch, yes. That's the, that's the end of the roll call. That's 15 in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. Well, that's a strong vote. Okay, the recommendation of this task force is to leave the comprehensive plan alone. Leave it as it exists until the Beltway Express Lane study is completed and more information is available. Thank you, everybody. Um, a lot of time and effort went into this and uh, I appreciate everything, uh, all the, the task force members, everything that staff has done, uh, the members of the public who have contributed. Um, thank you all so much. Um, and and, and, and on, behalf of, uh, on, on behalf of the planning staff, we, we just wanted to uh, thank you all for uh, the time you've put into this process as well. Um, we started back in February of uh, 2020, I think it was, when we introduced uh, all the SSPA nominations to the um, <clears throat> to the Lee Land Use Committee. And then from that, uh, several of the Lee, Lee Land Use Committee uh, members volunteered their time to participate in the screening process and also in this plan amendment process. So on behalf of the, uh, on, on behalf of uh, Fairfax County uh, Department of Planning and Development's planning division, we just wanted to thank you all. And also, also on behalf of uh, FCDOT, who who also played uh, a uh, vital role in in the analysis and uh, providing you with the information that you, that you uh, used to make your to come to your uh, decisions on both of the uh, plan amendments. But thank you all. Yeah, th and thanks thank for you. saying that, Stephen. Uh, this may not have been your favorite pandemic activity, but uh, <laughs> maybe it was top five. I hope. Um, but it's really been the span of that time, hasn't it? So this task force work is, it really has. Excuse me, Clara. This task force work is done now, unless we're so called back by the supervisor. That's right. That's right. I mean, really, we we have all of the su meeting summaries. We I think we can share the flavor of this discussion. You, you'll have your written recommendation. Um, the next steps are um, for staff to write a staff recommendation. Um, it will uh, include some information about the task force recommendation. I mean, it will, and then you'll have your separate task force recommendation. And those will both be prominently, uh, prominently featured at a uh, public hearing. Assuming we, you know, we schedule those public hearings. Okay, thank you. Um, and, and, and I should add that David will We'll keep this group um, informed about those next steps as they get scheduled. If, if the staff, you know, when the staff reports get published, you'll you'll be in, kept informed about the status of this plan amendment. No good. I was going to ask about that. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Um, I suppose to tie everything up in a nice bow, we're going to need to adopt minutes of this meeting. So I, I guess. Um, you know, we'll try to produce uh, some minutes and then I will email them out and perhaps we can conduct a vote by email and um, just to uh, get a proper set of minutes for this meeting. Um, with that, I, I don't know if there's anything else that needs to be said. <laughs> Again, thank you to everybody. Um, all the staff members involved in this process. I'm sure if I tried to list everybody, I would forget somebody. Um, but I know Steve Waller has been in this from the beginning. And thank you, Steve. And um, you know, David Stinson had a big chunk of of, of what we did, and uh, has been there. Um, doing a lot of work on this and, and there were others. And so thank you all staff, task force members and the public. Um, appreciate your effort. And with that, I think we're adjourned.
Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Good night. Ed.